keys. Last year means nothing, more than three wins. We will always have a chip on our shoulder. That's what you gotta play with. Don't worry about what we did last year. Don't worry about what happened the year before. This is your time, this is your destiny. Must dominate, I said the boards cut out, rebound and run. It's still what we've been made of, it's still what the program stands for. So defend, cut out, rebound and run. Only 65 miles separate these two schools. So it's a heated in-state rivalry. There's always a lot of juice. For Michigan, nobody really knew what to expect from Jawan Howard as a head coach. What we've seen so far has been impressive. Chris Cash is an outstanding leader, great with the basketball, provides a lift whenever they need something done. He's an accomplished driver, really settles the team down. Terrific three-point shooter. Michigan State coming off a 76-56 win over Illinois on Thursday night. Michigan blowout victory over UMass Lowell. The Spartans control the tip. Using the high screen, pull up pop, got it. And Teske, of course, staying back, protecting the lane. Nobody showed big, and why not? The leader brings the bell. Simpson gives it up. Johns gets a look, and he connects. Teske. Get into it quickly. Henry, that lefty delivery. Woo. Boy, pretty efficient on both ends early here. Simpson off the drive. Creative <laughs> Xavier Simpson. Clever. But Winston sneaks inside and goes with the offhand. Teske, mismatch, baseline. Uh -huh. Go! Cassius Winston. They can make this shot. And he will take it and make it. A three for Marcus Bingham Jr. He is an elite shooter from deep. It's a 13-point lead for the Spartans. What a real difficult environment. And this is a tremendous point guard matchup with Winston and Simpson. Winston again! It is stuck on automatic for Cassius Winston. 24 points. Oh, look at the back oh. guys off. Ankle breaker! Cassius Winston with the pullback jam. Davis blocked by Marvel. Winston. Pretty cut to set it up. Nice win for Hall. Tastes good. Cassius. He can shoot it. Rocket Watts with a corner pop. Michigan State is on a roll. Seven straight wins for the Spartans as they knock off their in-state rival, the Michigan Wolverines, 87 to 69. <laughs>to acclimate yourself a little bit we were off for a couple days so um and then practice sunday and then and then gave them off on monday it was monday it was a travel day so just want to be at our best on friday afternoon and uh and sharp and focused in everything that we're doing know what wake forest does know what we got to do and don't get to too uh confused and uh, and uh, make sure that we can play here
How you feel to be in New York right now? Because I see you just been smiling the whole trip. You just you ain't saying no. I'm just grateful for everything. That's all you've been saying, man. Honestly, just soaking it all up, man. It's a great experience to come out, be out of you know, be out of my hometown for Christmas. You know, out here shopping with the boys. It's a time of a life. You know, I can't even think of anything else I'd rather do. Oh man. So. I mean, hey, I, that's to the heart, G. Hey, you feel me? You feel me? Come on, man. Hey. We hey. know how you do, man. We out. I was born in Gross Point, Michigan and then I lived there for a short time. Then I moved to Macomb, Michigan. I don't know if anybody knows, 22 and Heinrich, the north side of Hall Road. Growing up there was me, my mom, my dad, and uh, my dog, Kramer. You know, we got that name after a TV show called Seinfeld, which kind of was funny. My dog, uh, it was huge, you know, it's like my the brother I never had. Growing up with him, you know, coming home from school, you know, maybe mom and dad weren't there. You know, maybe if they had to go to there at work or had to do something or on the road somewhere. So, you know, going home, you know, being able to play with my dog, you know, taking him on a walk. When it'd be like snow on the ground, you know, going to the backyard, just like, you know, like wrestling around, like playing in the snow with him. And, you know, so that, that was a really good time. Growing up in elementary school, middle school, and high school is always a sports activity after school, always a go to, you know, always a practice, always a game. Look forward to going to that. You know, I wake up at school as a kid, oh, I don't want to go to school, but at least, you know, at the end of the day, you got to go to an athletic event where uh, you're having fun, you know, playing uh, like a childhood game. The more sports he could play, the better. So, you know, he played a lot of sports early on. Growing up, we always tried to stress being positive and um, just being thankful for what you have and who you are. We always said, you know, you're healthy, you're happy, you know, you're doing well. Just be very thankful. So he, he's always been pretty positive, I would say, overall. And we have too. When I was younger, you know, there was always like a decent team in Detroit. If it was the Red Wings, the Tigers were good when I was growing up. Uh, the Pistons were also good. 2004, I won it all. It was always like something like look forward to to watch at night, you know. Maybe there wasn't like, you can't like a school night when you're younger. You can't really hang out with your friends or nothing. Like there's no like siblings at the house or nothing like that. So like that, then, you know, you could turn on, you know, Red Wings on at 7 o'clock, Pistons on at 7, 7 05, whatever it was. So it was just cool watching them. It was early elementary when they won the Stanley Cup and we had an inflatable Stanley Cup. So he brought it to school the next day. That was exciting. Um, we went to several Red Wing games. Tigers, when they were in the ALCS, we went to that game. When Maglio hit the walk-off, we were there. So I was at that game, sending the nosebleeds all the way up top in section 342, row 30, whatever it was. And that was like my earliest memory of a, of a sports game going to. He's a die-hard Lions fan. He loved them, he still loves them to this day. I kind of joke around with it. I call it like victory Mondays. You know, if the Lions don't win, uh, Monday mornings are tough. <laughs> you know, it just feels like it's gonna be a long week. Growing up, I say, uh, I love playing hockey. Like that was probably like my favorite sport growing up, you know, until I started, like I was always like taller than everybody, but you know, I really started like, we like started growing and growing and then like started playing basketball and like it was really easy for me so it started becoming like more fun. So I say like when I hit like middle school like I really started like falling like love with the game of basketball, you know. Uh, kind of dropping other sports. It's like I eventually got to high school and like basketball was the only sport I was playing going into my sophomore year. Uh, but before that it was definitely like kind of like a hate love relationship with all different kinds of sports just depending on like if you had like a bad game or not. Ninth grade, he said, this is what, what I want to do, and, and I want to play basketball. And we had said, are you sure about this? Because he was really good in football, really good in baseball. Um, when he got to junior high, we said, you have to pick between football and hockey now. So ninth grade, that's when, you know, all the EYBL, and it pretty much is, is year round.
it was just an awe-inspiring experience and it was just crazy what happened here and uh, you know it, it, uh, it, was, it got really emotional in there and um, I felt like there was a it was just a time to just be quiet and just uh, just see what what happened you know something that I will never forget my family will never forget everybody will never forget going inside the museum and seeing the people who's passed during the time of 9-11 and seeing how their families was talking about them and just showing that how grateful they were to be able to have good memories and be able to experience like the good memories with people being lost and the biggest thing I feel like I took away from it was I know my dad he went, went overseas and I know how important it is when family have to leave and not having someone there and being able to sit and stand where people were at as the whole thing was going on it was so surreal. Gentlemen, you're going to enter the annals of New York Stock Exchange history this morning by signing our book. Ringing the bell was pretty cool. It was uh, a surreal feeling, knowing that you're going to be uh, televised around the world. And uh, being able to be a part of that was very cool. I know we've been you know, seeing everything and then just asking random people what they do and them explaining uh, stocks and all that stuff to us. Um, it's been a really cool experience for us so far. Very unique experience. Pinstripe Bowl has been unbelievable. I think everything that has been told to me by other coaches who've been here um, has just been an exclamation mark on that. Um, so expectations have been exceeded here in terms of how we've been handled and everything. Uh, oh yeah, look, 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 at, look at him say swear. Look at him say swear. Football keep you going, so try and try and continue to get a little bit better every single day in something you're good at, whether it's art, or whether it's music, whatever it is. Okay, but get some of the channel channel things outside. Right? Got to be a good person. Got to learn how to work. Got to be a worker. Okay. All right. So that's the same things I tell these guys all the time as we go forward. All right. If you can do those things, you can be very very uh, successful and be a champion. So. For MSU. Like we try to be very unbiased, you know, you know, and not steer them either way. Um, we did watch other universities as well, but he was he was always attracted to Spartans, you know. Always, we would go to a game and sit pretty high up at Breslin. We have we'd always go at Christmas time. He's always been a Spartan fan. You know, in grade school, and he'd ride his bike to school. He'd have a state on his helmet, you know, on his bike. He'd have state stuff, stickers and stuff. He loved state. I say I love kind of Blossom, you know, kind of towards like the end of elementary school, you know, Michigan State football and basketball, you know, we're always kind of like the best like one-two punch or like athletics like kind of in the country. You know, I remember going to an MSU football game when I was younger, I think it was a game. They won like 26 to some versus Michigan and Denard Robinson was a quarterback and they only had like negative 47 yards rushing. I remember like going to that when I was really little. Coaches who has a reputation for being tough players on the court, you know, off the court, uh, he loves you a lot. But somehow, you know, that was really important to me. You know, he looks out for all his alum. That's why you have so many people coming back. You know, there's, you literally can meet a new alumni like every week that's trying to come back here, trying to help guys out and stuff like that. So, you know, that was something that definitely drew me to come to the program. When he got here, he has a knack around the basket. He gets the ball up quick. Very smart kid. Uh, School-wise, very smart kid basketball-wise. He's got great hands, and those hands make him a very efficient player. In a bad way, Henry with the ball. Down low, Kipler. Oh, man, he got lost. John's lost him defensively. Oh. Now 
it's down to about 10 seconds. Cash down the lane. Oh, a beautiful floating pass to get here. Coming right down the baseline. Caught it, laid it up, and it's in. Wow, beautiful. Being with sports is always told to be a team player, and that to be a team player is kind of like a family, right? So sometimes you, you know, may not want to do something, or but but it's for the benefit for the team or the family. You have to do it. So that sports have really helped him in that aspect since he doesn't have siblings. You know, my dad's always been a positive person and tried to tell me growing up that uh, there's always somebody that has it worse, and always somebody that's gonna have better than you. So just you know, I always try to look for the best things in days try to help out people and I try to carry that over, you know. You know, teammates might be going through different struggles and you know guys might be struggling at practice. You know, I try to always encourage guys. I just try to be positive with every guy on the team the best way I can. One person for sure is uh, X, you know, Xavier Tellman. He's always been someone that's been there for me. You know, he's my roommate uh, on the road last year uh, for every away game, every neutral site, every tournament game. And uh, you know, he really helped me out, you know, just talk to me, you know, like he he has a different experience, different side of life. You know, he he has a family, he has a kid. And uh, you know, just kind of like teaching like me different things, you know, different perspectives. He has a pretty good good uh, grip on life, and uh, he's also you know helped me out in many ways in basketball. So you know, just like watching film on the road and stuff like that. It's definitely days where you may might not want to go to practice or stuff like that. Or you're just maybe going through the motions, but you're glad of the decision you made to come here. You know, uh, it's a great program. These coaches are always behind your back. You know, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's a great experience and something that you would not want to change for anything. Old Yankee Stadium, the most recognizable touchstone of baseball history, has also been the site of memorable football moments. We're in the Bronx, and we're at the new Yankee Stadium, the Spartans against the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Wake Forest's strength is their offense. We know the calling card in East Lansing is defense. Strength against strength in this ball game. Michigan State won the toss and deferred, so it'll be Wake Forest's offense getting the ball first. Newman off the fake. Launching for Kendall Hinton. Touchdown, Wake Forest. What a drive to open the day. Brian Lewerke on second and 12. Throws it right side. It's caught by Naylor. Jalen Naylor out over the 40. Nice shiftiness by Anthony Williams and some of the speed on display as he takes it for nine yards to the 40. Matt Coglin. Try to put the Spartans on the board. 22-yard field goal splits the uprights. Wake Forest 7, Michigan State 3. Big play for the Spartan defense here. Nice. And the pass is batted oh, down. It may even be picked up. That could be a That's pick touchdown. for big Mike Ponishuk. He's across the goal line into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Ruling on the field is an interception. Return for a touchdown. That's a home run if I've ever seen one here at Yankee Stadium. Newman trying to throw to one on one. Donovan Green reaching out. What a catch! Touchdown, Wake Forest. Lewerke airing it out. Trenton Gillison makes the grab. There goes the red shirt freshman still on his feet. First down and goal, Michigan State. Brian Lewerke runs to his right, into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. An eight-yard touchdown run for Brian Lewerke, and the Spartans are back on top. Michigan State with a 17-14 lead. 6-31 to play in the half. Snap back to Jamie Newman. Pump fakes left. Now unloads deep middle. He's got a man open. Over the shoulder grab made by his big tight end, Jack Frudenthal into the end zone. Touchdown, Demon Deacons. Michigan State and Wake Forest here trading blows back and forth in this first half. 21 to 17, now Michigan State gets their opportunity to come back out offensively with 6.19 to go. Lewerke, past the sticks. He's got Jalen Naylor for a first down inside the 20. It's a 44-yard attempt for Coglin. And he is able to deliver. Well, this is a big kick, and we mentioned Mark D'Antonio was talking about, hey, I've got confidence in Conklin. He's a guy I can count on in clutch situations. Big kick right before the end of the half here for Michigan State. Elijah Collins slips free. Outrunning Henderson. Pushed out of bounds. Big gainer for the redshirt freshman from Detroit.
31 yards. Play fake. Dumps it off. Cody White trying to hit the pylon. He's in. Touchdown Spartans, and they jump back out in front. The fifth lead change of the pinstripe bowl. It's fourth and eight for Wake Forest at the Spartan 38. Michigan State leads 27 to 21. Winds up. Throws towards the end zone. It is over the head of Donovan Green. The big deal is the Spartans hold him on fourth down. Under pressure, Naquan Jones in the backfield to bring down Newman. Well, this is just, I mean, that's just like a man playing with boys just right through the middle there. That is just a really tough look. We mentioned Michigan State had to dig in on defense. That's the fourth drive, zero points. Yeah. That's answering the bell. So Wake Forest has time, but a field goal doesn't do them any good. They take over at the 20. <laughs> Need 80 yards and a touchdown. Another three-man rush. Hartman spinning away from Willikis. Still on his feet. They need the 30-yard line. Hartman stops. Fires. Incomplete. Turnover on downs. It's Michigan State ball. Brian Lewerke has got to take one more victorious knee to close out his Michigan State career. Throws for 320 yards. Nice way to go out for him in the rest of the senior class. Great season for Wake Forest, which will finish at 8-5. Could this be one of those jump-starting wins for the veteran Mark D'Antonio at the helm of this Michigan State program? And he rides Brian Lewerke and this Michigan State defense to a six-point win.